At time of relapse, therapy has to be incredibly individualized. It has to take account of numerous things, the age and frailty of the patient or health of the patient, the geography, where, how far they live from the, the hospital or the clinic. It has to take account of uh, socioeconomic issues in terms of ability to pay or even for parking to come and visit the, the hospital. It has to take account of what drugs the patient received in the past, whether they tolerated them, whether they had side effects, how long they la the remission, if they had a remission, lasted for, whether they were refractory. All of those factors result in a very individualised approach to relapse. There is no one-size-fits-all. Having said that, if we take the seven randomised trials that are available to us, a number of things have become clear. In almost every circumstance, using three drugs shows overall response rates to be higher, depth of response to be better, progression-free survival to be prolonged with three drugs versus two. And I think the vast majority of physicians in the United States have moved to triplet therapies, and they can vary uh, from drug to drug, uh, but that has sort of become the, the standard. I would say again, within that three-drug cocktail, the combination of a proteasome inhibitor and an immune modulating drug, so for example, the combination of carfilzomib with pomalidomide or perhaps exasmib with lenalidomide uh, have become very commonplace. The disruptor is the addition of daratumumab, the monoclonal antibody, which can, can be combined with great success with either an immune modulator, again lenalidomide, but in the United States often pomalidomide, or can be combined with bortezomib, both of which show dramatic improvements when the third drug of daratumumab is added. So, in summary, triplet drugs, often with an imid and a proteasome inhibitor, but increasingly with the monoclonal antibodies. One of the, the major issues we are facing now is that lenalidomide is being used continuously from time of a diagnosis. So at time of relapse, patients have been exposed to that drug, often for a long period of time, and have become resistant. Many of the clinical trials we have available to us use lenalidomide as part of the, of the backbone. So for a patient who has not had lenalidomide, the choice is much clearer. It's usually going to be to move to lenalidomide at relapse with elotuzumab, with exasmib, with carfilzomib, with daratumumab, take your pick, uh, depending on the individual patient. For the patient who's been on lenalidomide, which is increasing in number, uh, that is a harder decision. I think at that point, uh, two choices exist. One is to use an alkylating agent instead of an immune modulator, something like the combination of cyclophosphamide with curfilzomib or exasmib, or to switch class of immune modulator and to move to pomalidomide, a much more potent immune modulator than lenalidomide. And I think in the United States, many people are using pomalidomide at first relapse, combined with curfilzomib, combined with daratumumab, combined with other novel agents.